Hey, good afternoon. It's Gordon with Triangle Lawn Games. Today I wanted to help you guys understand a little bit better how to run a cornhole tournament using automated online software. It feels a little daunting to run your own cornhole tournament, especially if you've got a bunch of teams and a bunch of people yapping at you trying to get this thing done. But in reality, you can do it. It's not that hard. And using an online software like we're going to show you today is going to make it way easier. That said, you can do it on paper. At TriangleLawnGames.com, we have free downloadable cornhole tournament brackets that work just fine, especially when you're doing smaller tournaments, single elimination tournaments, or you just you don't have internet, you don't have power, you just want to do it by paper. We have the brackets ready to go, so go feel free to download those for free. But let's say you're doing a larger tournament or you have access to the internet, you have access to power, highly would recommend using an online software. So there's two main cornhole tournament softwares that we've found that work well. The first is Scoreholio. It's very specific to Cornhole. A lot of pros use it. It's a good piece of software. Um, it does a lot of things that I don't personally need, so I don't use it as much. I use something called Challenge, and Challenge is a really simple, fairly easy to use software that I'm going to show you here. So when we're setting this tournament up today, it's going to be using Challenge. So let's look at that. Um, as you can see, you go to challenge.com. It's C-H-A-L-L-O-N-G-E.com. It's kind of spelled weird, but once you get there, you can sign up for an account. So if you do not already have an account with Challenge, you just go to sign up, go through that process, and then you'll get to the dashboard screen. So I'm already signed up. Um, I'm signed into my account here in Challenge, and it's pretty straightforward. The first step I would do is click that Create a Tournament. So I'm, you know, I'm, so let's say um, I've got my tournament kind of like prepared. I've got my list of teams ready to go. I'm ready to create my tournament. I always recommend getting a list of teams up front for your tournament, whether you have a pre-registration form using Google Forms or whatever you're doing, or you know if you're using your if you're doing it for your company, you know trying to build your own form, your own spreadsheet of teams, you do want to make sure you have teams, not individuals, or you'll want to you know automate you'll just match them up randomly as individuals on your own and then create teams. That's going to be the way to do it. So you'll go to create a tournament, hit tournament. And then you'll want to name your tournament. So you can name it, let's say, TLG Staff Tourney, right? Let's, we're doing something fun for everybody. You can change the URL. And the URL is nice because you can use that to share with your, your folks. And they can actually go to that URL to see the bracket during the tournament, which is nice if you're, you know, want to be on your phone and you want to go to the bathroom or go grab a drink or whatever. And you can kind of see when you're coming up. Or if you're already up, um, you can catch up on where everybody's at in the tournament, who's winning. That's pretty nice, right? Um, you can add a description to it if you want, and then you'll want to pick a game. So down here in the game, you'll you know, search cornhole. And then let's talk about the types. So there's two types of tournament that you're setting up. Really, um, there's two types, and then one of them has a variation. Uh, both of them have a variation. There's a single stage tournament, which is just your kind of standard bracket. You know, you have all your teams, and then they go uh, along, you know, playing each other until the end. Or you have a two-stage tournament, which we, you know, right now the World Cup is going on. It's kind of like the World Cup. The World Cup is a group stage where everybody's in groups of four and they play each other twice, and then the top teams come out of that. Or you, uh, and then they go to that that knockout phase. So that's a two-stage tournament. I, I do not often do two-stage tournaments for cornhole. We have one coming up here in January that we're going to run, but it's not super normal. Uh, typically, you'll do a single-stage tournament. And I would recommend that if you're new to this or if you're just doing this for fun for your company or organization, just do a single stage tournament. It's going to be way simpler. Then, then the other variable is going to be single elimination or double elimination. And what that means is single elimination is, let's say you have 32 teams. All 32 teams can only lose once, and then they're out. If they lose, they're out. And that's the simplest. It's the quickest. And it is uh, time is of the essence when you're talking about single or double elimination. Double elimination means you you know, you go, you're in your racket, and you'll see it here when I set this up. You, you're playing in your racket, and then if you lose, you go down to a secondary loser bracket, and you can play your way out of that to get back into the winner bracket, essentially. The consideration you'll want to keep in mind here is that single elimination is half as, um, half as slow as double elimination. It takes twice as long to do a double elimination tournament. So my, my rule of thumb is that for every 16 teams for single elimination, you're going to probably take one to two hours. For double elimination, you're probably going to take between two and three hours for those 16 teams. So that means if you're doing 32 teams for a single elimination, it might take two to four hours. For a double elimination, it might take three to six hours. 
Um, and then it kind of extrapolates from there. You can think about if you did a 64 team tournament, um, you might be able to get that done in three to five hours for single elimination or could be five, six, seven, eight hours for a double elimination tournament. It really depends on the skill of the players. The first few rounds go pretty quickly because you'll have a lot of good teams against a lot of bad teams and those will those will get done pretty quickly. Then you're just waiting on boards to open or you're waiting for this team that's in this part of the bracket to, to finish this one game because that opens up the rest of the bracket. Um, ultimately, those first rounds go pretty fast, especially if you have enough boards. Um, the later rounds go a lot more slowly. And so you'll get two teams that are super good and they're really you know going at each other. They're, they're both just canceling out every time. It takes a long time to do that. So keep that in mind when you're setting up your tournament, when you're planning your tournament. Try to make sure that you have enough time to actually run the tournament you know, in the time allotted, right? So picking single or double elimination has, is a big factor in how long your tournament's going to take. Um, and then we'll go through number of boards that you'll need, but typically, uh, as a good rule of thumb, I would say uh, between four and six teams per set of boards. So if you had 16 teams, you might want four sets of boards. 32 teams, you might want between six and eight sets. Um, so then we're going to set this up as a single elimination tournament right now. Um, actually, I'm going to set it up as a double so I can show you that. There are some other options in there, but we typically don't mess with that. You can have a grand finale where the one to two matches, that option means that the the winner, um, the the top seed, that person that's gone all the way to the end without losing, they would they would have to lose twice. Which So if you know you come out of that loser bracket to play the, the end winner, and you'll kind of see how this works when we set this up, uh, they would have to lose twice. In, you know, conversely, you can set up one match so that they only have to lose. That they, they, if they win that last game against the loser bracket, they win, and you don't have to do that secondary game. So um, typically, we'll do the one to two matches, and then registration is typically free. We don't mess with registration fees personally. We run these for corporations, churches, things like that. And I would imagine that most of you watching are going to be folks just trying to run it for fun. So you're probably not messing with that. You can sign up for a paid version of challenge and do you know paid registration and stuff, but Almost all the time, we're asking for a list of participants, and I'll show you that here in just a second. And you can have your own sign-up page, but typically you just want a list of participants. You'll throw it in there. You'll start the tournament. makes it really simple. So we'll do free. We'll have a, you know, provide a list of participants, um, and then we'll require participants to register as a team. That means you can have individuals. Like, let's say you just had a big list of individuals. You could keep this unchecked and then put all those individuals in there, and then it'll pair them up. I wouldn't mess with that if I were you. I would always try to get team names. And if you have a list of individuals, just pair them on your own, um, just randomly. It's going to make your life a lot easier to do just teams. And then you'll pick a start time. So we're going to pick this start time. We're going to start it today, December 9th at 4 p.m. Very exciting stuff. And then there's some other features down here. You can take a look at all this stuff if it applies to you, but typically it doesn't. Um, and then we'll hit save and continue. So we've just got the basic foundation of the tournament set up. We're going to do a double elimination tournament. Um, we're going to put in our participants, but we've got the basics set up. When it's going to start, what type of tournament it is, go from there. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to, want to set up your participants. And so you would go to the participants tab. And then what you can do is you can add them individually. So if you're just you know sitting at a table and you would almost always have a scorers table, that's going to be typically how this works as well, is that you've got this set up on your computer. You want to have internet and um, power, and then you'll want to set this up so that you can have a scores table, a TV connected to your computer with HDMI that shows the bracket screen, and then people can come up there and they can submit their scores, they can submit, you know, who won which game, and, or, and they, you know, beforehand, they can actually submit their names and they can say, hey, I want to sign up for this, because you'll get your list, but then you might have some other people that show up uh, that want to play, and as long as they have a teammate, if they are a team, then you can just put them in here manually, you know, team name here, right? So N, 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 I'm going to add that, right? And then you can remove that if you want it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add them in bulk. So I've got a spreadsheet already made. You just need team name, right? So it's just team name as a header. And then you don't even need to have the header in there. You just copy and paste the team names. Make sure they're all their own individual line. Go into add in bulk. Come down here, paste it in, bulk add. And then in a second, it comes up. So then now I've got all my teams up here. I shuffle the seeds. You don't have to shuffle the seeds necessarily, but I typically do, just so that they're kind of randomized. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is add stations. And stations for challenge is what we would call boards or sets of boards, right? So for this one, we're going to have eight sets. 
Um, so I'm just going to type them in. I don't know how to speed this up. I'm not super fancy with um, editing or anything, but basically you just put in your team, uh, your set names. What we also do is we'll typically print out um, pieces of paper and then tape them to the back of the boards that have the set number, the set name on it, so people know where they are. Um, we got a quick hang up, so you can just go ahead and do that. Refresh it, set three. If you ever have an issue with challenge, I find that just refreshing the page works pretty well. Some With so, any type of software, you're going to get some bugs. Just refresh the page, and it'll be just fine. So then you keep going through, adding your sets. Again, make sure that you've got these labeled actually physically on the board in some way. Um, we typically just, like I said, print them out with our logo. Works well. I have one more, so we're going to do eight sets on this one in this particular tournament for 32 teams. And then you'll want to make sure you select automatically assign stations to matches as they become available. That's important because during the tournament, it will automatically assign the next match to the next available set of boards. You don't have to worry about that. You can do it manually if for some reason you want to. I do not mess with that. So I would definitely make sure you check that. If you start the tournament and it's not automatic, go back to stations and go down to this option and make sure that you select that refresh the the bracket page and you should be good to go there so now we've got our tournament set up we've got our participants in there and we've got our stations right so we're actually ready to start now um, as we go back to the bracket you can see that it's got all our teams in there again if you wanted to add teams before you start um, that weren't in your spreadsheet you can just go to participants and then you can go to display name add the team name add them you cannot add teams once you've started the tournament. So you really want to make sure, that's why having a PA system so nice is that you not only can announce the teams and the games when they're up, but you can say before the tournament starts, hey guys, last chance, or you know, we've got five minutes to sign up. This is your last chance to sign up for the, the Cornhole tournament. You can take however many you need to. Um, you can get more teams done in there. If you have odd numbers, the bracket does look kind of funky because then it's not, uh, it's not clean. You know, you don't have this, this team playing, this team, this team playing. You have teams waiting or buys. Um, so just keep that in mind. That's what's going on if you have 37 teams. You're going to have some buys in there. Uh, but let's say everything's good to go. You've got your participants in. You've got your station set up. It's set to automatically go on. We can start the tournament. So I'm going to hit start the tournament. And then once you start the tournament, it's going to tell you, and it's a little small to see, but it says set one, team 29 versus team 20. So what you can do, and what we'll always do on the PA system, is just go, all right, guys, first up, we've got Team 29 versus Team 20 on Set 1. That's Team 29 versus Team 20 on Set 1. And then you just announce the games that are active, and then they start, right? So you've got your, your boards already set up. You've got your numbers on the back of them. They should, they'll know where to go. They're adults. They'll figure it out. You've got, you've got your boards and your bags set up, and then they'll go play their game. They keep their own score. There's not like some fancy automated scoring. You just tell everybody, keep your own score. Um, if you have scoring, uh, there's you know things you can have on the back of the boards, or you can have um, scoring posts there next to it if you want to get fancy on them, and then they keep track of the score that way. But they'll keep track of their own score, and then once they're done, they just come up to the scorer's table. So just make sure they know that. So then we'll say, all right, uh, Team 29 beat Team 20, right? So Team 29 won 21 to 8, and they'll submit their score. Then you just put the score in, hit Submit Score, and it moves Team 29 on, right? So then let's say on Set 2, Team 16 beat Team 17, 21 to 5. You submit that score, and now you've got Team 29 versus Team 16, right? So that moves it on automatically. We could go through this all day, but basically that's all that happens, is you just go through here, and I'll typically just put 21 um, once we've got things moving, people don't really care the score that much. So you just put in 21 as a team winning, and then you start putting in the team winners. People submit their scores. You will sometimes have to wait on a game to end, and that can slow things up if you've got like one game in there that's you know set five, and they have they've been going really slowly, or they're you know really good teams and they're playing each other super close, whatever it might be. But then you just go through here. And, Submit the scores and the games. It's going to tell you what game's coming up next, right? So as we move down, it, it comes down and says set eight, team 14 versus team 22. Um, you know, and you, as you can see, it just kind of moves it automatically. You just have to keep up with what games are active. Um, we'll typically have a two-man crew running. 
so that one person is sort of sitting behind the computer making sure that the brackets you know updated and somebody's always there to submit scores and then we also have somebody out there helping just figure out which games might you know are supposed to be active like let's say we call out set four team 30 versus team 31 and it's been five minutes and there's team 31 sitting there but team 30's not and we got to find team 30 so we'll announce it on the pa we've got our runner trying to figure out where everybody is and then that's kind of how it works you just make sure that things are moving forward um you know it's good to have some volunteers but this software makes it super simple obviously you can see that it just automatically moves the bracket along and i'll show you the loser bracket here in just a second as well so you've got all these teams that lost in this first round they move down to this secondary bracket and then you can call out those games as well so let's say team 21 here team uh 26 one here and then it moves that along so that's really it and then it's going to tell you here at the end once you get through all the teams which winner you have or who won the the tournament you can also expand the bracket which is cool you can go full screen and so what we'll do typically in i'll move this down here we'll typically zoom out a little bit and you can see the full screen and then you have this up on the tv people will come up and say hey when am i coming up and you, you'll say okay well what team are you and they'll say Team two, and you'll say, um, cool, you're playing team 19. You're coming up here shortly. Um, we're waiting on a set of boards. So, you know, we've got eight active games. Once a couple of those are over, you're going to be up. And that's all people need to know, typically, so they can look at the bracket themselves. But that's it. I mean, and then you can get out of this by pressing escape over here um, and then come back to your bracket. Again, if you needed to make adjustments to the teams, you can't do that after you've started, but you can... Um, you know, you can change team names and stuff. So that's really it, guys. I hope that that helps uh, and it shows how simple it is to use Challenge to run a cornhole tournament. You do have to have the right equipment. You, It's nice to have run through this before and, you know, see how it works. But that's the basic gist of it. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to us, support at trianglelongames.com. We love helping answer questions. We have some great resources on our website. Um, I'm going to put those uh, link down below in the description, but we have a, a full blog on how to run your own cornhole tournament. It runs through some of the details here, some of the types of equipment you'll need. If you do need rental boards or PA systems, uh, we have that stuff available for you. So, And we can even just come and run these tournaments in not all of our markets, but quite a few of them, and we have more information on that at trianglelongames.com. So thank you so much for watching. We hope that you have a lot of fun with this and that your organization or your company, whoever it is, has a successful cornhole tournament. And uh, hope you have a good one. Thanks.